Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to talk about some cool things we can do for submixes and a nice way to speed up creating say a reverb or a delay send so that you don't have to go through so many steps. So first thing is all about selecting tracks. So I can select multiple tracks in a couple of ways. One is start with the track on the left and then select everything in between by holding down shift like that. Or we can select individual non-contiguous tracks by holding down command or control on a Windows machine and selecting this way. So holding down command or control gets me individuals. So I could say select these three, skipping the snare and the toms. Or I can hold down shift and get chunks, everything in between the two tracks that I've clicked on. So once I've done that, one nice thing is that I have a do to all key, which is option or alt, right? But there's also a do to selected version of that, and that is option or alt and then shift. Okay, so say that we want to do a send on all of these drum tracks to the same reverb or to a submix, whatever it's going to be. I can hold down shift and option or shift and alt on a Windows machine and create a new bus destination and they all get that bus, which is pretty cool. We can also do that with solos, mutes, so that's shift and option. Okay, so two ways of creating a submix. So say that maybe I've already got a nice balance between the drums, and then what I'm gonna do is just change the overall volume of all the set without changing any individual volume. So I don't want to have to turn things up and down individually just to get the drums louder if I have all these drum tracks. So instead, what we can do is create a submix. And the first thing to do is I'm actually going to do do to selected and remove this send. And then I'm going to create a new aux input. So new track, stereo aux input. And we're going to call it like drum sub. And hit create. Cool. So now I have this new drum submix that I want to be able to control the overall volume with all my drums. So for that, we don't want to do a send over here because that means the, the audio would actually come out each track and out the drum sub track. So that means I would get double the kick, double the snare, however much send volume I'm sending over would be added to the mix along with whatever's coming out of the actual kick track. So instead of using a send, what I need to do is change the output of these tracks. So all my drum tracks are going to go out to this, and this is going to be the overall volume for my drum tracks. So I can again select all the tracks and then do to selected, which is shift option or shift alt. And then on the outputs, I'm going to send them to that new track. Now I can do it on a bus. So that's kind of the standard way to do it. So I'm going to do that real quick. And now they're all going to bus one, two. Now that's still not going to help me because that's now going nowhere, right? Or it's going to wherever bus one, two is being used in my session. So in order to get those to actually route into my drum sub, uh, my sub mix for the drums, I'm going to put the input of that bus. Think of the bus like a cable. I'm going to put that bus here. So bus one, two. Now all my drums are not coming out their own tracks. They're going to be coming out just my submix. So, more perfect. drums. So drums are gone, even though I only pulled down this one slider. And then I can adjust the volume of my drums as I like. Okay, another way to get all those guys on a bus to the right track is rather than having to deal with that extra step of making the bus, choosing the bus, and then setting it on the input and output, I'm going to switch the input back to no input here. And then I'm going to put all these buses back to just no output as well. So I'm going to do my, my do to selected and go no output. So no drums right now, right? Nothing's coming out. I've got my head. So nothing's coming out there. And now if I want to send these all to this drum sub track, 
I don't have to do that extra step of choosing the bus and putting the input. Pro Tools will do that for me if when I do my choice of my output, I choose track and then choose the drum sub track. And now check it out. It automatically labeled it drum sub, which is cool. So now my bus has a nice label. That's another step gone, renaming that bus one two to something readable by a human. And then drum sub automatically routed. So because there was no uh, input on the drum sub, there was no bus going there. Pro Tools automatically created one for us and sent everybody to the right place. So that's awesome. You can do that with a reverb. You can do that with a delay. All those things will get a bus automatically created if you just choose to route via a track instead of via a bus. So if, it's, if that's for a send, it works the same way. So the output will work, but I could also do a send to a specific track and pick the track I want to send it to. And the same thing will happen. So say I created a reverb like right there. If that doesn't have a bus already applied to it, Pro Tools will create a bus for us that's called verb and it will send it to the right place. So that's a lot of steps taken care of for us, which is really nice. Uh, by the way, when you do have this drum sub created, uh, you want to solo safe that mix because if you then solo one of these drums, you won't hear anything if that's not also soloed. So say I just want to listen to my kick when I've got my submix set up. So right now I'm hearing the drums. So my drums are coming out just fine, right? So what if I just want to listen to the kick right now? What's going to happen? Nothing happens. I don't hear the kick because the kick is coming out the drum sub mix. And so I then also need to solo that in order to hear the kick, which is super annoying. So instead, what we're going to do is solo safe any of those uh, sub mixes. So I'm going to hold down command or control and click that. And you'll see the solo button grays out. Now, if I solo the kick, I'll hear the kick and some bleed from the snare, sounds like. So one more thing. Let's create this the new way with a folder track. So I'm going to delete this drum sub. Now there's two kinds of folder tracks. So one is less useful than the other. So one works for submixes and one doesn't. So if you just need better organization and a way to just quickly solo and mute all of uh, a set of tracks, you can right click on a set of selected tracks and choose move to and then choose new folder. And you can choose basic folder. So you could just call this like drum folder create. And you'll notice all the drums are now kind of highlighted along with this drum folder. And if you click the folder icon, they collapse. So now I can clean up my mix a little bit. I can see a little bit better. And my drum folder can be quickly expanded or I can quickly solo and mute all the members of that folder with this solo and mute here. So we won't hear the drums. We're not going to hear them anyway because there's no output on them right now. But it's a quick way of organizing, right? And then to expand and collapse, use the little folder icon. But that's all a basic folder does. All right, so that doesn't work for routing. That doesn't work for a submix. But we can very quickly use another kind of folder to create a submix. So I'm going to right click again. I'm going to go move to new folder. But this time, when I get that dialog, I'm going to choose routing folder. And I definitely want stereo. Samples is fine. And now I'm going to go drum submix and click create. Oh, we also need route tracks to new folders so that the selected tracks that we have are actually going to get routed to that routing folder so that I can control them in a submix. Nice. So now I automatically have a submix set up. So all that work we did to create an aux input track and then make a bus that goes over there, all that stuff happens in one step. Select the tracks, choose move to, then choose routing folder, and now I have automatically a submix. And on top of that all, I don't even need to solo safe this guy anymore. It will automatically work now. So these guys already have automatically generated a bus to go through to my submix. And then we also don't have to worry, it's automatic that this is solo safe. So if I hit start, and there's my kick, no problem. Another step taken care of, I don't have to solo safe my submix. 
So this is an awesome way now to make submixes for things. So when do you need a submix? Well, maybe for your drums, or maybe all your backing vocals should be part of a submix once you have them all balanced out. So again, select the three tracks or however many there might be, right click, move to folder, or you could always add them to an existing folder, but we're not gonna add the backup vocals to the drum folder. Click new, there we go. We'll get our dialog. So all, my last selections are still there. So routing folder is there, it's in samples of course, stereo, and route tracks to new folder is gonna make it a submix. And then we're gonna go BG vocals or something. Create, and now I have a background vocal submix. Super easy, and I don't even have to solo safe those. I also don't have to create special buses to go in between the two. Pro Tools is doing it for us. So awesome. Alrighty, so that's it for that one. I'll see you in the next one.